I'm Karen Brackey of Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. In this video, I'm going to share with you an overview of the research that my colleague Matteo Spacheco and I conducted with a group of seven toddlers when they were between 15 and 27 months old. In our work, we examined the emergence of a new bimanual coordination pattern, work that we describe in the SRCD monographs in 2019. First, let me share a bit about why we were interested in bimanual coordination. Humans' flexibility and skill in using our two hands together allows us to manipulate objects and work with tools in many complex ways. But how do we learn to coordinate our hands as children? Dr. Pacheco and I were interested in finding out. So we selected a relatively simple skill, drumming, and tracked the emergence of a particular coordination pattern both moment to moment and over months in our group of toddlers. We chose drumming because most toddlers really enjoy it and will perform it repeatedly if asked. Let's look at our drumming behavior a little more closely. There are two basic patterns that most people find easy to perform with a high degree of precision in timing. The first is what we call in phase, which is when the two hands move up and down at the same time. This in phase behavior tends to be a very stable form of drumming and even toddlers can perform it well usually about the age of 15 months or so. Here we see an example of in-phase drumming performed when this toddler was only 17 months old. The second pattern that most of us find easy to perform involves the hands moving in opposite directions so that as one hand moves up, the other hand moves down, like this. This is called an antiphase pattern because the limbs move in opposite directions. This video clip shows an example of antiphase drumming by a 26 month old toddler. Although adults generally perform this antiphase pattern well, this performance is typically not as stable or consistent as it is for in phase drumming. For toddlers just starting to drum, it takes time to learn how to overcome their natural tendencies to drum in phase so that they can produce antiphase movement. Our work focuses on just how toddlers come to do this. Notice that in the drumming bout shown here, the toddler starts with in phase motion, then briefly holds one stick still to switch to antiphase movement. In making the switch from in phase to antiphase coordination, the toddler must overcome the natural tendency to move the arms up and down in synchrony. Even a simple change in behavior like this represents an important step in developing the motor control and flexibility that will be critical to future skill with object manipulation. To address our questions, we needed longitudinal data. So we asked parents to bring their toddler children in once per month for about 20 minutes so that we could track how the toddlers engaged in drumming behavior. We were able to record several hundred bouts of drumming, which we then subjected to motion tracking using specialized software. The data we used for our analysis focused on the vertical motions of the drumsticks and on how these motions changed over the months of the study and moment to moment. What did we find out? Our monograph reports a lot of detailed analyses, but here are some of our main findings. First, we discovered that toddlers engaged in some brief sequences of antiphase drumming even during the early sessions, but most of the toddlers showed increases in antiphase stability after they were about 20 months of age. We also found that toddlers displayed various routes to stabilizing patterns in the ways that they engaged in antiphase drumming. Some relied on slowing down their movements so that they could start a new drumming pattern. Other toddlers would do things like temporarily freeze one arm or restrict how much it moved. In these ways, the toddlers would disrupt the synchrony between the two limbs so that a new coordination pattern could be started. So what do all these specific findings tell us about motor development more generally? First, we learned that principles of short-term motor learning may also be applied to longer-term age-linked development. Although each young drummer experienced a unique path to stabilizing the new skill, toddlers tended to use similar strategies of either modifying their movement speed or changing the relationship between the limbs in order to change from in-phase to anti-phase movement, just as we predicted based on the model of motor learning that we used. Also, we saw that variability of movement, 
sometimes dismissed as instability, allows the exploration of action that in turn supports the emergence of new behaviors. In other words, what some people might think is just messiness in development may actually be movement variations that are necessary for learning to occur. Thank you for watching this video. To learn more, please read our monograph, which is available on the monograph section of the SRCD website at srcd.org slash publications slash monographs. You may also visit the Monograph Matters website for additional related content at monographmatters.srcd.org.